Oh, hey, Ben, you going good? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How you going? Yeah, pretty good. Just chilling, yeah. chilling at home. What did you what What did you do today? Uh, I've just been here in my like writing room studio space, um, down in North Fitzroy, just grinding it away. I don't know. It's uh, it's been good. I had one of those days where I was, everything was going really awesome. I thought. And then it all just sort of fell apart, like House of Cards, everything I've made. But that's all right. <laughs> you write a lot, don't you? Yeah, write quite a bit. But um, and that's I guess when you write a lot, you realise how much shit you have to write to get to the good stuff. And uh, <laughs> yeah, there's definitely no shortage of the former. <laughs> yeah. So you spend a lot of time at home writing, recording. Is that sort of your setup at the moment? Is that what you're doing? I've got like this, this is my little space in North Fitzroy and then I live up uh, uh, sort of 20 minutes north of here. So um, uh, like I, after COVID, I just needed to get out of the house. Like I couldn't, couldn't write from home anymore. So I separated the two and it was like, it was great. Really, really positive change. Yeah, that's one of those things, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose with with COVID, a lot of people sort of made studios in their homes because of it. They weren't allowed to go yeah. out and whatnot. And then there is that impact that it can have on your personal life. I suppose if you're constantly in a bedroom of your home and you're not out doing other things, kind of thing. Yeah, it was just like a, a constant distraction point for me. It's nice to like sort of like lock everything, like you know. Uh, because otherwise I would, do, I would do that thing where I'd like sit down on the couch or whatever. And then I'd be like, oh, actually. And then yeah, like. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I would just never be present. Like, uh, and, uh, and I think it's like maybe okay for, for me to listen to like, you know, an, a drum loop for two hours while I'm writing something over yeah. the top of it. But like, yeah, my poor wife would uh <laughs> push her push her to a limit of sanity uh those thoughts coming in a lot are you constantly thinking about music yeah, yeah it's like that's 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 my main problem that would yeah. be like i had to pick a problem in my life that i could get make go away that's my problem i just it, can't switch up it's funny a lot of people would love to have that problem as well you know there's a lot of people out there that would be like oh i'd love to just constantly have songs in my head but it is draining isn't it it does. It does get draining. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely has its pros and long list of cons. But I mean, uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to be too much of a downer. <laughs> it, like, it, you know, we wouldn't have beautiful, good things coming up if I wasn't such a workaholic. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hey, I was listening to Eminem talking the other day, and even though you know he's he's made all these records, he's made all these millions of dollars. He still makes sure that he goes nine to five in the studio. And then when it gets to five o'clock and if he's working with someone and it's five Oh one, he's like packing up his stuff. And the guy that's like, he's working with will be like, where are you going? And he's like, no, we can, we can start again at nine. Like you can always, you can, you can put a pause on things and come back. Wow. Yeah. I need it. I think, <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's like some, I don't know what the like magic level of achievement is where it would allow you to stop chasing as hard and, and be able to put like a line in the sand like that. Cause that sounds very attractive to me to be able to do that. But, but I think, um, you know, it's that forever. It's like the horizon. It just keeps moving that achievement, you know? And it's like yeah. when, and I just don't know when I'm going to get there when I can just exhale a bit. Yeah, but, it's like is Paul has Paul McCartney gotten there? Like, you know, like do they yeah, get to the, do you no get to a point? It. Do you ever get to a point where you go, oh, I've done enough, I've written enough songs, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And then like I've been on this massive like gear tear lately of just buying shit just to for some new sounds and inspiration mm. and that that's exhausting in itself, just you know, buying and stuff. There's so many plugins too. Oh my god! Yeah, I don't get out of that shit. I'm like, yeah, I'm just like, I think because for years I wrote just on guitar, and it was like, um, and now that you know, since I've been writing with other people and learning tricks and collaborative stuff, it's like uh, my world's just sort of open. And I just go, you can write a song with anything. And I was like, okay, you know, it's like 
I can teach myself how to play that or that or that or that. And it's like, um, sometimes you like spend all this time gathering your tools when you just should be working <laughs> instead. <laughs> I, I, no, I, I feel you. I totally feel you. Hey, yeah. I kicked off this podcast about a year ago. We've been doing episodes every week and you are the most requested person. Um, oh shit. Yeah. Your name comes up quite a bit and, wow. uh, I've had a bunch of people on here and, and you've, you've entered a lot of conversations, Beck Stevens, I had on this podcast a little while ago. Uh, and, but, but yeah, when it comes to people listening, they've, they've said, you've got to get Ben on. And I'm so, so stoked that it's finally happened. Oh, wow. This is, <laughs> yeah, it's not going to live up to the hype at all. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, your story is great. I love your story because it starts at the back of the stage. You weren't a yes. front man. You were yeah. a drummer. Yes, I was a drummer. And I actually have just taken a real return to the drums in the last like six months. And I'm like, I think I ran away from drums for so long because I was, um, because you are hidden up the back of the stage. And I always, you know, I was a little bit of a, like a backseat driver in past bands um, uh, because I felt like it in my core I was a songwriter and now that I've like I think established that I have this you know I, I haven't sat behind a drum kit properly and written or tinkered properly like, you know in in mm. so many years because it was like that line in the sand but then like now I've uh, I did some writing over in LA and a bunch of the different producers that I wrote with had drum kits set up in the corner of the room and we'd finish like a song or whatever and they'd be like you know, it'd be good to put some live drums on this or something. And then I'd be like, oh, I can play drums. <laughs> and I got on the drums and like played a bit. And they're like, oh, you're good at the drums. And I was like, it's like, fuck, maybe I should play some more drums. And then, um, yeah, I've just been, I just bought a new kit actually. And like, just, yeah, what do you got? I just bought like an old like 70s export, like a Pearl export. Um, nice. But um, yeah, just for like writing little break beats and stuff to feed into recording and then i'm actually buying heaps of uh oh, i got one here like these old vintage like 80s drum machines and stuff and yeah is that the 808 or something oh uh, no i wish it was an 808 there <laughs> this is a um this is like a a cheap little guy called a roland r5 and i've yeah. got a couple over here that's my new obsession like feeding them into each other creating right like crazy patterns but um yeah i i love drums like drums are like just just love drums i swear that i can hear the drums in your vocal which is the weirdest thing to say oh, um, shit. like i can just the rhythm that you you get with your vocal patterns and whatnot like i feel like only drummers yeah. would do that and and i i feel sorry for you at times because i'm like when's he going to take a breath <laughs> oh there's a lot of um there's a lot of syncopation uh yeah to me that feels natural because like a, a lot about being like um a, a, being like a uh, i'm trying to think of another word that like a proficient drummer is less about like it, it's it's like being able to play on every intersection of the bar you know what i mean so it's like um and like we always talk about this in the band it's like i'll enter at like a strange point you wouldn't feel very intuitive yeah. to someone who because like to me it's like maths and i'm thinking about like you count drums in like a one e and a two e and a three e and a four so like i yeah it, i do compose things like quite rhythmically i think and that's where i start more so almost than than melodically sometimes i heard like Haley from paramore and she she talks about it when she talks about how she writes rhythmically that that really like um resonated with me and i know other vocals like um like chino from deftones he right. he played drums first and stuff and I, I can sometimes i think i hear in him what you're saying what yeah you, just, you hear. it's just a bit of know. rhythm in the in the vocal that like you you i feel like you wouldn't have if you just didn't know what you were doing on a drum kit and it's special it's not it's not it's not something that everyone has you know um oh, thank you and actually when i was talking to beck stevens and we we're talking about i think it was big worry her song 
Oh and, yes, big worry. Yeah, since you're telling me about the work that she, that you've done on that, and just some of your ideas, how you, I, like you were just saying then, I think you'd go, hey, in the pre-chorus, you've got to change up the, the way you're cutting in and, and doing that sort of stuff. And she also brought up your drumming face. She says you've got a really interesting drumming face. Oh yeah, <laughs> I definitely my orgasm face. <laughs> oh that's so funny that is so funny you were just talking about la as well so what do, you, what do you do over there you go over there and write songs for are you writing songs for your own projects are you writing songs for others yeah a bit of both so it's just just it's been like a real uh, uh just sort of using the, that muscle that i've been building up over over covid and that really intense lockdown period of writing and um and then just being really hungry for collaboration so just like writing with all sorts of different people from around the world and for other artists and um and just loving it like just yeah and you and, and I think like there's something to be said for like writing songs in a bedroom like by yourself on like a little nylon stringed acoustic guitar like I still love that and that's still how I write a lot of songs but um and, and they you know are spontaneous and they'll catch you while you're washing the dishes or there's still that I love that but um but I think there is really so much value in meshing together like two people with different backgrounds and making something creative like um and being on the spot like I really like the that deadline like that mm. you know that I don't know it's like a pressure cooker in environment to write in because you have to make quick decisions and you can't overthink things and you can't and like you have to say sometimes your bad ideas to get to the good ones you know what I mean so it's like it's a very freeing thing to just kill your ego for a second go I've had this idea it could be like awful but you stranger in the room what do you think you know it's like kind of I kind of I really like it so are the boys in slowly slowly when you show them what you've got for an album that's coming up, for example, and you go, Hey, this is what I got. Yeah. And they listen, are they very constructive with their wording and how they speak to you about it and whatnot? I mean, are they all, or are they just like, man, this is sick. Let's record this. Yeah. They're like just my biggest cheerleaders. They're just the best that like, yeah. um, and I take their opinions like extremely seriously. So um, if they say, I don't like this song or, or on you know the antithesis of that if they say i really love this song like it needs to be on the record because i've been like cooking up a few other little projects lately um and there's things for you know this dumb side project we're doing called too slow and there's mm -hmm. some, other, some other stuff for myself that i've been doing and i share nearly all of that with the band with with slowly just to be like what do you guys think and sometimes something for other projects have you know prick their ears up and they're like no we, we want that like that can't be that sorry and, and even things that don't concern them or that they're not involved in it they're, yeah. they're just like no that one needs to be in and it's just like you're the boss it's all right so like yeah I, I, they're, I yeah they're very instrumental sorry in the creating of i'm blown away by how much is actually coming out of you because um yeah this too slow you know i i think when i saw that you were posting about it it was like Hey, these are a bunch of songs that I'm just churning out and I've turned into something else and it's a whole new project. And I saw with the pizza boxes and all that, it's such a, it's a cool idea that you've done with this thing, but it's just crazy to see how much, how many songs or good songs are oozing out of you. Like a while. Too Slow is so fun, man. Cause it's like, it's not, um, we don't take it very seriously. And it's, and that style of writing is like, you know, it's because I think I grew up with it. It's, I find it like, not easy is not the word, but it's like mm -hmm. less, uh, with, with slowly I'm always trying to push the envelope and, and upskill and and like really dig deep about like, you know, any epiphanies or revelations I've had inside myself and how I interact with the world. It's this yeah. it's very serious thing. Whereas, um, whereas too slow is just like, yeah, it's just, it makes me feel like I'm in high school again. Too slow, and, remi too slow reminds me of get the skateboard out, flick your hat backwards and start rolling down the street. Like, you know, that sort of vibe, like uh, the, the the traditional pop punk sort of vibe. Yeah. I mean, it, it was, uh, a lot of it was built around our drummer Murph because he's grew up playing in those skate punk bands, which is a bit of a lost art, like that style of drumming. Like, I, I don't know how to do it. He, 
and it's because a lot of I think younger people didn't grow up with it um like right in that sweet spot of like 12 to 15 if you don't do that sort of drumming in that age you just you can't do it like the rest of your life you cannot do it it's Murphy's a machine so like in the same way that I guess Blink writes wrote things around Travis a little bit like Mm -hmm. we're just doing that we're just like isn't that you know I think we were just talking in the van one day while we were touring and I was like you're so good at that like and I love that style of music like we should do like a fun little thing and and then it just snowballed man like it's like we got another EP that we've just finished and it's like we're gonna put it out in like Jan or something um but it's 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 uh yeah it's it's rolling by itself. It's so it's so fucking funny. That's so good. That is that is awesome. You bring up Link One Eight Two. Obviously, you had I Miss You. You did with uh, Triple J. Um, oh yes. Yep. And that version, I remember just before I pressed play on it. You know, I'm thinking, geez, I wonder how they're going to do this version. And it just came out beautiful. Like it's oh, uh, yeah. it's incredible. I love I love the chords and uh, that you use in the in the chorus and and how it gets heavy there and stuff. Uh, Blink One Eighty Two, big inspiration for you guys. Oh yeah, like yeah, they're like that'd be like you know one of the three circles in the Venn diagram that who makes up my musical tapestry. They are like yeah, they're amazing. Like it's just um. Yeah, that 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 like 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 a version was just such a source of stress for me because mm-hmm. like I just didn't know which way to take it. Like I didn't and I didn't uh didn't want to like ruin one of my favorites and it was very high high pressure. But I'm really happy with how it turned out. It sort of has this weird like almost like Kings of Leon vibe in the verses or something. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 yeah. spectacular the way you guys did it. Yeah, with that triple J pressure, like you know everyone's gonna be listening, right? You must be like, oh fuck, here we go, we're on now. Uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, it, it is it is pretty fucked. It's like <laughs> how much <laughs> how much you put yourself out there and yeah. like you you know what is it? But I mean, like you don't get any of the glory without the guts. You gotta. But you got to put your cock on the block. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I'm going to use that cock on the block. <laughs> That's good. Um, <laughs> Daisy Chain. It's been a year on. Uh, I saw you guys play. So you guys play with Stan Atlantic at, at Gosford. Actually, I was at the Drifter oh, show. Shit. And yeah, um, yeah. Oh, amazing. I remember that one. Okay, I remember what? That one. okay. Well, I, it was it was spectacular, you guys. But what are we you trying to? Base. What are you about to say? Well, the bass cut out first or second song, and we needed to Albert's pedal board. No, sorry, um, Quail's pedal board died. So I remember that stress, and I, I remember, but it was a kind of seamless how we did it. Yeah, but I then, didn't. No one noticed. Didn't notice. Okay, that's good. <laughs> and then um, we also had because we'd arrived really early that day, like eleven hours to kill in Gosford, and we were deliriously tired and hung over and um we i remember we just we just started drinking uh, and then we were just we we're on the pokies and it was like we had a really good <laughs> we had a really good time in gospel so what time did you start drinking oh no i'd be ashamed to say but I, it, it was it was <laughs> it was a, it was a good time we really liked gosford um we loved the people of gosford it well none fun. of that was noticeable no one knew that you were really? you were drunk out of your minds and no one knew that your pedal boards weren't working i'm, I'm sure of it <laughs> oh good yeah that's great that is so good we're gonna yeah <laughs> um scotty a listener of the pod he wanted to know how do you how do you go from the back of the stage i know we we're talking about this earlier but to the front yeah. and just like the confidence you've got now, like you just, you, when I watch you at Gosford, you're just crazy, you know, <laughs> on stage, you know, you're jumping around and you've got the mic swinging, everyone's, you know, holding you up, you know, you're going from this thing to the next thing. Was there a time where you, you weren't that sort of, you weren't, you would never have done that. I think so. Like I was always very like shy and, um, uh, anxious on stage like when we first started and I like I still have like no faith in my own ability like in terms really? of like a live live like with singing and performing and like I'm just such like a harsh critic of myself and that's something I need to get better at but 
Um, but I don't know that I think started, I think it was actually, you know what? I'm having a realization while I'm talking to you about this. I think it was like when I discovered that bottleneck of energy, like in performance, that helped me like sort of like redirect, I think a lot of the anxiousness on stage is where I would be sort of out of body less mm. than, you know, when you are standing there and you're thinking, Oh my God, like I'm fucking, I'm fucked that bit up or, you know, here comes the big bit. Fuck, fuck, fuck. You know, like it, all this stuff, like I think the antics of being on stage and, and jumping around and, you know, getting in the crowd or, you know, bowling through Murph's drum kit or something, they, they, they have been a, almost a byproduct of just being so like not being confident. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It's I may, maybe like deep down, it's a big thing of like, I can distract them with the fact that I'm such a terrible singer. If I um, swing from this fucking thing and throw myself into the wall, or, you know, it's like, but I don't know. Isn't it, crazy, you know? isn't it crazy what you're saying? Like this band's given you so much, like not just the music and all that sort of stuff, but confidence yeah. in yourself that I'm hearing, just hearing you say that, like, imagine if you didn't have the band, maybe you just, you wouldn't have been so, so confident, you know, um, it, it's, it's oh, amazing absolutely. what a band can do. Oh yeah. It's been such a, like a springboard for all of our personalities in the band, I think like, and it's, it's been beautiful to watch everyone come out of their shells over the years on stage. Um, and, uh, you know, even like Alex, who he mixed, uh, he, our bass player, Alex, he mixed like the two slow stuff and he also mixed um, early slowly records. Wow. Um, and like, we're just working more collaboratively than we ever have at the moment. And, and like, you know, you know, we're not confident people in the band. Like none of us are like, you know, uh, naturals at this. We had to like work for it and, uh, yeah, we, we would definitely be very different without the band. Yeah. Well, you've done incredibly well. You've got four albums out now. You got every time I look at a festival lineup, I see your name getting higher and higher and higher. And it's so cool. <laughs> Good things is happening in December. You're up there with some of the biggest bands, you know, of, of, of our years. Yeah. Um, do, do you ever take a step back and go, wow, I'm like playing with Fallout Boy? Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I, I mean, I was obsessed with Fall Out Boy growing up. I mean, Taking Back Sunday, mm. The Biscuit, like these have all been like chapters of my life. Like, and I'm not talking like casual listener, like obsessions, like yeah. all through, all throughout. Like, you know, it's, it's fucking crazy. I mean, I, you know, the, these, these moments, like, you get a few in a row of the, like, you know, that 15 year old me would just be like, dying but um i don't know but it's like the only way of like actually mentally coping with that the magnitude of something like this mm. is just almost uh like being a bit numb to it or something like i actually in my head like i'm like is it gonna happen like these good <laughs> things gonna happen like someone's you know, gonna like, take it away from you in the middle of the night or something yeah, like you're gonna like we're gonna wake up tomorrow and like I'll get cancelled or something or <laughs> <laughs> you know like it's like good things won't happen like it hasn't really sunk in. I'm talking about it with you like it's yeah you know. Well, let's hope you don't get cancelled. Uh, good things <laughs> don't cancel me. Don't cancel me, Sean. For saying cock on the block. I already regret saying cock. No, on the block. I like cock on the block. I'm using it. I'm using it. Thanks for. <laughs> Thanks for chatting with me, Ben. Well, uh, good things happening in December. You can catch slowly, slowly there, but uh, right. but yeah, don't leave your cock on the block. <laughs>